This is Arts Alive. I'm Linda Philippi. My guests today are Erin Padilla. She's the Arts and Public Programming Coordinator at the Jehalem Cultural Center. And we also have Barbara Doyle, who is a noted local author, writer, and she has written a fascinating history, which she's going to tell us about. So welcome, ladies. Hello. Thank you. Glad you could be here today. Thanks Come for on. having us. <laughs> well, we're going to dive right in, Barbara, and start with you from then till now. What's this about? Well, it's kind of two stories that run in conjunction, simultaneously. It's about a building called Central School. Um, it was abandoned for about 10 years, and about 2004 and five, a group of people got together and said, what can we do with it? And I participated off and on with that group, and then eventually it led to my writing a book about it. Um, the building eventually became Chehalem Cultural Center, one reason why Erin is here. <laughs> um, it also comes down to the fact that Central School, um, the building that's there was erected in 1935, but it was the second Central School on that site. So that got me moving backwards in time, historically. And I, I mean, I am, I am a history buff, so that was easy to do. And so I just kept going further and further back in time to find out what schooling was like. So I went back to the Native Americans. And then I took a gigantic leap of about 12,000 years and brought us up to 1879 or something like that and started the story about the school. And so it's the development of the educational system in Newburgh and the history of the buildings that are associated with it. And of course, as the cultural center, it is still very much involved with schooling. Oh, absolutely. So it's, it's two stories kind of running together here. Now, was it Central School, was it, was it always a grade school or did it, it was, was a, it? Well, it was a grade school, it was the first grade school in Newburgh, but at that time they didn't have high schools. So as kids graduated from the eighth grade, and there were parents who knew what was going on in the world beyond Newburgh, they said, but there's something beyond the eighth grade. So they pushed for a ninth grade. And of course, when those kids graduated, then, well, now we need a tenth grade. And, you know, this went on until they well, they were always suffering from the problem of how many students we have at the beginning of the year and how many classrooms do we have for them. And there was always the answer was always too many students and not enough classrooms. So when you started pushing high school into there too, mm -hmm. well, eventually they had to create a high school building. And when, did, when was the high school building built? Well, the first one was built in 1910. Mm -hmm. And that building still stands. It is now the administration building for the district. Oh, really? It's been several versions of schools sure, in between, sure. like uh, elementary school, a junior high school, you know, the over, over, you know, kind of the dumping ground when you've got too much stuff, where do you put mm -hmm. it? Well, there. And so, it, you know, we've got two old buildings in town. That's great. That are associated with education. And, and you must have heard some fascinating stories writing this book. Well, some of them are really interesting. Some of them are... Well, they fit into what I'm interested in. I mean, you know, if you like history, you can say, well, I want to write about George Washington or Mozart or something like that. I like to deal with ordinary people mm -hmm. in everyday lives because that's really what makes the world move forward. And so I like to see it as it spreads out over time, which this certainly does. And it's where you are. That's right. You know, so, I mean, you don't have to travel halfway across the country for your source material. That's it's right. right here. Well, you don't have to do that now at all. You just get onto <laughs> Google or the various sure. websites and you can mm -hmm. do research from anywhere. <laughs> so what was the most surprising thing to you about, well, in the course of your research? Whoa. Did anything really <laughs> jump out at you? Well, I guess the lack, <laughs> it comes back to what I said before, the fact that they never seemed to anticipate correctly how many students they were going to have. And so it's like, how many years do you keep repeating the same error and having the same problem? You would think they would learn. Was it there, is a school, you know. Yeah, there's a, a census. There's some kind of an idea of how many people live here in this town. And well, you do a pre-registration or something. And I, I didn't really realize or read anything about pre-registration or anything like that. But it was just, well, most of the information I got was from the Newberg Graphic, which is the paper. Mm -hmm. And uh, just and, going back in the archives. Oh yeah, okay. 1888. Wow. <laughs> and that thing's an example of perseverance because reading microfilm. Oh yeah. Where the type is a font that probably doesn't even have a number attached to it's it. So small. <laughs> so small. 
and the early papers never bothered to put in headlines, so you never knew what you were reading. You just had to read down the column, and maybe what you were looking for was there, and maybe it was three columns over, and mm -hmm. it, it was all mixed up. So there was a lot of just minutiae and oh, yes. farm stories yeah. and weird oh, yeah. stuff. Yeah, well, you, that, you yeah. eventually learn how to somehow make your eyes say, I just saw the word school there. Go back to that section and mm -hmm. read it. <laughs> yeah. How long have you been working on this project? Well, I probably started in um, June, maybe, of 2014. Really? That's come together pretty quickly. Well, there was a time reading those early microfilm years. I'd come home and I would have spent three to four hours at the library and I would have gone through three to four months. Wow. Yeah, right. And I'd be, I would be sort of paralyzed. It was like, I just want to put my head down and not have oh, to look at anything. I just want to close my eyes. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Can't see anymore today. Yeah. And then there's just a matter of, I would suppose, sort of synthesizing all the information oh, well, yeah. that you have. And then how do you make kind of a compelling story around that? Well, my husband is always my first reader. And he? he said, but these things all don't go together. In a paragraph, I said, but they do chronologically. <laughs> you know, it all happened in 1913. So you have so, to decide, yeah, you have to decide how you're going to tell right, the story. Yeah. Is it going to be chronologically or thematically? Well, it or, had to be yeah. chronologically. Of course, in it's this history. Case, right? But um, it's sometimes, you know, a couple of totally disparate things appear in the same paragraph because they all happened right at that time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, everything. Like life. Right, and everything you know. isn't in that case of A leads to B leads to C. Mm -hmm. It could be A is independent, B is independent, C is independent. Yeah. What's holding them together is th this, yeah, the space My and words, time. My words, I hope. Yes, <laughs> yes. So then, and at the same time, are you also telling the story about the renovation of the space? Oh, of course. Okay, so yeah. that's a, another yeah. piece of your. Of yeah. Your, of well, your it's, book. it's the history of the buildings, mm -hmm. and then the history of the schooling. So, but. Okay. They happen at the same time. Mm -hmm. So it's really two stories in one, which means it'll be a good deal financially. You know, you get two stories for the price That's of right. one. <laughs> no matter which way you're interested. Okay, and you're going to do a, you're going to do an event, yeah, a, an yes. anniversary party for the building. That's right. And a book warming. Release. Book release. There you go. That's right. what I was Aaron looking said for. I'd have to be a signing, and I'm not crazy about signings <laughs> until a few friends of mine said, I'm coming to that release, and I, you're going to sign a book. So I told them. Exactly. So please. don't drink too much wine before you get the book signed. <laughs> oh, they'll never recognize my signature one way or the other. <laughs> Well, you want to talk about the, the party? Yeah, yeah. Sure. We're just thrilled that, that Barbara's written this book and that we get to release it at the Cultural Center. I think it's pretty exciting. Um, and it's the 80th birthday of that building. Um, mm -hmm. So it's all coming together quite perfectly. Mm -hmm. um, I think so. <laughs> I think so. Um, and so the party is uh, going to align with Art Walk in November, which is Friday, November 6th from five to seven and we're gonna have cake and balloons and oh, hopefully fun. a big sign and really embrace the birthday party aspect of it and then have a book reading of a, yeah. a part of it um, at 6.30 um, mm -hmm. and then book signing and books will be for sale as well. Uh, so We can talk about this later but have you printed out this time schedule already? I haven't printed it. It's sent to marketing, though, so we okay. can we can change things. <laughs> yeah, because it's five to seven. I think we ought to make it at six rather than six thirty. Okay. Well, there we go. <laughs> okay. Seven quickly, huh? Yeah. Book reading. See, it's executive decisions on the fly, <laughs> yeah. which is a sign of true leadership. <laughs> so overall, you can say that this has been a very rewarding experience for oh, you. Oh yeah, it has been. And so the party will be like the fun culmination of all of that. All right. Kind of the celebration, yeah. and anybody who's eighty years old, I presume, gets in free, right? Oh well, yeah, well it'll be a free event yeah, completely kind of too. Yeah, but <laughs> those things are always free at the yeah. Cultural yeah. Center. Yeah, that's, that's what's so <laughs> lovely about it. It's yeah. just such a great place to go. Right. No matter when you go, there's something happening. And you said that you brought some information. Yes, we've got so much going on okay. right now. Um, so along with that, we have um, we're gonna have three exhibitions up during that time. We have Art Harvest Studio Tour exhibition up right now, and that's up through December 12th. Okay. Opening this Friday is an exhibition called Bent Not Broken, and it was curated by a Newburgh High School student for her senior project. Okay. Uh -huh. And it's all around the idea of how art can help um, process grief 
when you've lost someone. Okay. It's this really, really beautiful um, exhibition concept, and she sent out a call to numerous artists, and they've created a piece with that in mind, and we'll be opening that Friday, 5 to 8. Oh, that's great. So, yeah, she's done a great job. Her name's wow. Rachel Cox, and mm -hmm. this is her senior project, and she's really nailed it. So For, for George Fox? Uh, actually, Newburgh High School. Oh, really? Yeah, wow. high school student, right. Wow, that's incredible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She went to school and just has done yeah. in Newburgh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm really excited. We're going to hang that tomorrow. Um, okay. And that's in the lobby. And then in the founder's lobby outside of the ballroom is um, an exhibition called Guardian Fisherman. And it's photographs um, done by Robin Canfield, who actually went to Central School. So, you know, it's kind of this oh, wow. yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> collaboration. Um, it's all coming together. And his work is going to be up in um, the lobby right outside of the ballroom. Mm -hmm. These beautiful photographs about um, fishermen from Guatemala who kind of conserve and protect um, the lake um, Chajil Chup Chup. <laughs> I'm probably saying that incorrect, but... Um, He's telling their story and, and what they do to conserve that lake. And, and, and Robin is sort of playing it down, but the Cultural Center has five galleries for displaying purposes. Yes. And she's in charge of all of them. Wow. Yeah, so we'll have three for a while, and we usually range from two to three at, at a time, sometimes five. So <laughs> it's exciting. And I know that the, the Art Harvest Studio Tour artists, they've all got one or two pieces up. Yeah. So that's a pretty extensive show right oh, now. Yeah, it is. It's so it's much good. fun. 39 mm -hmm. artists, two to three pieces each. And um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. We've had lots of visitors for the tour because you can buy the buttons at the center. So. And this is the week also that you've got the kids in between yes. the two studio tour weekends. The kids are coming there and you were saying they had a group in there today for classes and demonstrations. Yes. That's so pretty exciting. That's a lot of fun. Everything's yeah. hands on. and. Mm -hmm. um, they made jewelry and these interesting cards and um, played with a, a tech um, program with Wes Cropper on the iPads. And oh, how fun. Yeah, yeah, it was quite oh, diverse. It's that's fun. It's a very creative place. It is. <laughs> and I think that we should stop and give a shout out to our very own Gail Watson. Oh, yes. <laughs> camera woman to the stars here, well, right behind me, who's working with you yeah, on your publishing. She's putting the publishing together. Yeah. Yes. That's exciting. Yes, it certainly is. It's I really mean, a homegrown affair. Uh, Gail has been holding my hand all the way. <laughs> okay. And so she's uh, another artist that's involved in this collaboration. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. I yes, love it. Yes. That's great. Well, ladies, I really want to thank you for coming today. And so let's run through your date, which is going to be Friday, November 6th. Mm -hmm. Correct. From 5 to 7. Right. At the, at the Cultural. Shehalem Cultural Center. Shehalem yep. Cultural Center. And then you've got other exhibitions that are ongoing as yes. well. So yes. let's just clarify, this is Newburgh <laughs> that we're talking about. No, Newburgh, of course, <laughs> yes. Yes. You know, I really, honestly, I love that building. I love that place. Mm -hmm. I think it's such a fabulous example of what a community can do when they really come together and decide mm -hmm. that art is a, a, a very important thing in the well, community. It's just, I'm so in awe of that project and how, how, what a wonderful job it's done to really pull Newburgh and really give it a sense of place. I love well, that. You needed a committee a of place. very dedicated mm -hmm. people and people who either had money or knew how to get money. Right, exactly. <laughs> to make it happen. Well, yeah. thank you very much. Well, thank you. Best thank wishes you. with your launch. Thanks.